Hi everybody, David here with Via Render. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. In this video, I want to look at uh, an issue that I saw pop up on the D5 Render forum, which is actually grass, and more specifically, how to deal with grass on the edges of your shot. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, everybody. So if we take a look at our SketchUp scene here, you'll actually see we've got uh, really just three rectangles with nothing on them particularly. This has got a default green color. This has got a default SketchUp grass material. And this one right here, I've left completely plain. I have gone ahead and sent this over to D5. By the way, um, I'm using D5 version 2.3. 2.4 just came out for me yesterday. And I've been kind of messing around with it at work. And uh, I think like a lot of users, you know, there's been some really cool stuff. And then there's some kind of odd, weird technical stuff. So hopefully that gets fixed. So right now I'm using 2.3. So let's bounce over there really quickly and we'll see how we set up graphs and how we can go about fixing the problems. All right, so here we are in D5. You can see this is an exact copy of our SketchUp scene. Nothing too crazy here. Now, I'm going to turn off the clouds, and if we actually just look up here on the top left corner, you'll notice a couple of things. The first thing that's important is the face count. Right now, it's at just 1,229. I don't entirely understand how D5 interprets geometry. Um, to me, I would assume in terms of face count, there's like four, or sorry, three. There should be one two, three, and if you're going off like vertex count, I still don't entirely know why it's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Not really sure. Suffice it to say, here we are with a thousand faces. Now I'll come back to why that's important in a second, but let's go ahead and assign grass. I'm gonna hit I on the keyboard and I'm gonna go up here to the material template and click the drop down, and I'm going to assign grass. Now, this will go ahead and assign grass number one. You can see over here, I'm going to assign grass number two. One thing to note about this, and I think this is slightly different to previous versions of D5, I think going forward as of 2.2 onwards, the underlying texture here, I don't think actually changes the effectively the sort of grass strands that are generated, these sort of procedurally created geometry. So we have to just manually assign really just one of sort of three different grass materials that D5 lets you use. Now, I should point out this grass that you're looking at in front of you is a grass material template type. This is different to when you actually go and manually assign grass or place grass in your scene from the asset browser think of this as more procedural grass. Now, it's also important to point out this procedural grass was not intended by D5 to be used very close to the camera. It was in fact intended for the medium and far distance. And you can kind of see why because of this. When you zoom in, you get a very strange border effect going on where the procedural grass texture just tapers off completely close to the edges. Now this has obviously caused a lot of users to be like, you know, kind of confused about what's going on and why it's working this way. I personally don't really understand why it's working this way or sort of the reasoning behind it. Um, but there you go, that's the way it is. So how do we fix it? Well, pretty easily actually. You can hit M on the keyboard, bring up your material palette. I'm sorry, your um, sort of the asset browser library. And you can see we've got models and we've got materials and we've got particles. I'm gonna to go to the model library and I'm actually going to type in grass, G-R-A-S-S, -S, and followed by M-A-T, grass mat. And there we go. So you'll see uh, hidden in the sort of nature tab over here is actually grass materials one, two, and three. And so what we can actually do is just grab the corresponding grass that actually fits with our actual grass that's been procedural grass that's been assigned to the texture. And we can go in manually and actually just paint in effectively an outer edge. And so you can see this is, and it's, it's not, 
too bad. You can do this pretty fast. You can also go down here to the bottom left and drag the D5, just the asset tab over. And you can see we do have the brush options. This will allow me to go ahead and just manually brush in grass. Um, you know, you can go in here and adjust the radius so you could do a larger area with this. I do think that's going to sort of increase the amount of this grass that's generated quite exponentially. I still think doing it in a slightly more measured fashion is the way to go. You do not, however, get the ability to really fine tune this as well as you'd like. There's always gonna be a few strands that kind of pop over. My personal preference here or my personal take would be just do this manually by hand because if you're using this grass and you're worried about the edges, it's probably because you did it very close to the camera, which is, uh, well, not really ideal and not what this grass was necessarily intended for. You can see that each of these grass materials will be assigned to really a specific type. I'm gonna go ahead and just increase the size of these and take down the radius and just place, and there we go. So that will give you grass materials one, two, and three that you can place. Now, you will notice as well, if we look up here now, back in the face count, we have 58,000 faces. So this geometry, even though it's procedural, does come with a effectively an impact. It's, it's not sort of like pseudo grass or proxy grass. It is still generated 3D objects, um, albeit sort of generated from the material tab as opposed to the objects themselves. Now, you may also be wondering about the impact that this is going to have. And what we're gonna do in the second part of this video is to just do a quick render test and see what has a greater impact on really just render times for a very simple scene. And we'll see which one has actually got the greatest impact, either this type of procedural grass that comes from the materials tab over here, the materials template, or actually placing a lot of hand placed grass. All right, I'll see you in part two. So in this part of the video, what I'm going to do is just do two quick, uh, basically videos. And if we go over here to clip one and clip two, clip one is pretty basic. We're just gonna move forward, basically sort of track the camera forward. And clip two is the exact same, except it's going to be on a different plane on the right, but it's pretty much the same. Both are gonna be set to six seconds. So they'll be exactly comparable time-wise. And the only difference is going to be which material is present in the scene. So clip one, I'm going to use procedural grass. And you'll actually notice that um, this plane right now that we're working on is actually a new plane. It's 100 feet by 100 feet, and both of them are the same size. So it's pretty much the same setup. The only variable here is going to be whether we're using hand-placed grass, using a mixture of different grasses from the asset library, or using the procedural grass that came from just the material template. So six seconds, just two different materials. Everything else will be the completely the same, same environment. We're just going to use just one of the like early morning or something, HDRI, something that'll keep things consistent. And I'm going to go ahead and set these up and render and see how long it takes um, and just see what it looks like and just discern the quality as soon as we're done. All right, I'll see you in a moment. some interesting results that I kind of was not expecting when it came to this. You can see over here we've got the grass template grass and that was the one that really didn't have a huge amount of faces attached to it. And then over here we've got effectively seven million faces. Really these are just seven million pieces of geometry effectively or at least seven million points. Now 
you can kind of see when we look at this from above, it's a little bit patchy, it's not perfect, but from eyeline height, it's actually pretty fine. And it'll do just perfectly fine in renders if you're willing to just patch in some of these holes, either in Photoshop or just by adding other objects, really. Going forward, I think what I'll probably be doing is using this approach, actually trying to place 3D models in my scene, especially if you have a couple of things, an undulating landscape, so one that's got a little bit of a hill in it, which if you're a SketchUp user, you can do with the landscape tools. I think that will help. Probably cut back a little bit on the amount of geometry you actually need and the second point would be to add some additional content in there to fill up some of these patches. Ultimately, though, I'm, I'm still very surprised that th this video in particular was faster by quite a bit of time than using the grass template. And it does sort of beg the question what exactly the role of the grass template is. Now, I know the D5 developers have said medium and far grass, but considering the impact that it actually had on performance. And this is, again, just this is a 100 foot square by 100 feet, which is not huge in terms of, you know, an actual site for a home or a commercial property. And especially not if you're doing these really large builds or urban developments or urban planning or anything like that. I don't know that I would actually use this. I, I think anything really for me beyond really that 100 feet range and preferably a little closer, I think I would just switch to using a really good grass texture map. From a distance, I don't really know that this is any better than really just using a grass texture map. And certainly anything up close to the camera, this you just gotta do this all the way. Um, I, I think it's something I'll be taking into account going forward. Okay. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you did like the content, please think about hitting the subscribe button. Really, that's just, you know, great encouragement to keep making videos and keep making uh, videos on different render topics. Going forward, I'll be adding some new content to the channel as well. We'll be looking more at Twin Motion. And as soon as Lumion releases, Lumion version 2023, I'll start adding Lumion content to the channel as well. Um, not to take away from the D5 content, but, you know, there's, it's a whole world of rendering out there, and I think we can expand the horizons a little bit. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.